I nearly made a terrible mistake in this latest episode of the Staten Island restaurant tour in which I pick a train station in New York's most distant borough and find a place to eat. Eltingville, originally known as Southside or Seaside, but now named for a family that settled there in the early 19th century, offered two major dining clusters, one on or around Amboy Road near the Staten Island Railway Station, one farther south on busy Highland Boulevard. I thought I might pick up representative of the island's growing Chinese population on Highland, though a later walk past suggested it was more of a takeout joint. At the last minute, as I was riding from Upper Manhattan to my destination, and remembering my warm welcome at Layla in Richmond Valley, I decided to try Middle Eastern again. Turkish, not Syrian, this time. It proved to be an inspired choice. The MTA, now more than ever for speed and reliability going your way. Got me there without a fuss, as usual, as I agonized over my oversized phone. Here is the SIR passing over Richmond Avenue, a few dozen feet from the station. Many stations on Staten Island's single rail line, which is not a subway because it is not underground, were built in 1860, then rebuilt in 1939 to eliminate at-grade crossings, thus minimizing conflicts between trains and other traffic. This is a safer arrangement, obviously. A few stations even have scenic red brick station houses over the platform crossing, which must come in handy when it's cold and wet. But it also means riders must struggle up and down tall stairways. The only station with an elevator is Newdorp, which got it just two months ago. I witnessed an elder with a cane struggling down these stairs, then down the other side, step by painful step. I kept a respectful distance to avoid rushing her. As a 66-year-old, I am quite aware of how fragile old bones are. In 20 years, it will be a miracle if I can use these stairs. It's good exercise right now, though. I could have walked to the restaurant, full name Riva Mediterranean and Turkish Cuisine, along Amboy Road. But I consciously have begun avoiding traffic-choked two-way streets in favor of quieter one-ways. On Oakdale Road, running in parallel to the main drag, I encountered what might be a famous boxer with a stern expression. He's actually a Century brand Bobo doll, an inflatable object you can punch. The same home's entrance was guarded by two pensive cherubs caressing doves, a contemplative moment for passers-by. I appreciate these efforts to civilize the street, though Staten Island streets, for the most part, are pretty civilized already. The bright splash of green in the landscaping, rather striking for early December, drew my attention to this home's handsome brickwork, curved chimney, and double-peaked roof, hiding behind its shrubs. Eltingville had a substantial influx of Norwegian migrants in the early 20th century. Either this house is an exemplar of their influence, or I just don't know beans about architecture. Autumn leaves also drew the eye with rich, now-muted color, red fading into brown with a satin finish that caught the cloudy light. I probably missed the prime part of the foliage season by suspending the tour to travel overseas last month. No walk on the island is complete without a pedestrian non sequitur. At least this one didn't force me into oncoming traffic. Muddy feet were the only hazard. Most tour episodes have featured bright blue skies, but Reba's modest exterior was basking in more muted light by the time I got there. I didn't even notice the waving flag till I reviewed the photos. There's my richly upholstered seat at far left, complete with almost invisible red pillow in the Turkish style. This is a very handsome restaurant. It opened just three months ago, which I found out not because I'm such a hotshot journalist, but because I overheard a conversation. Here is my long-suffering server at left. My social anxiety disorder was really acting up that day, and I may have seemed more awkward and befuddled than usual. I was treated with consistent kindness and professionalism. Let's play Spot the Writer. He's hiding behind his phone camera. I suspend calorie counting and other dietary concerns on the tour, but the salmon kebab was probably the healthiest meal I've had yet, eight episodes into the project, despite the refined flours in the bread and white rice. It was both delicious and drop-dead gorgeous. The bread, as usual, was warm and fresh. Staten Island must have great bakeries. The main event is worth a second look overhead shot this time. Imagine the love and care that went into this artful presentation. The server asked for an opinion, and I said, this isn't just healthy food, this is great food, period. Would I come back? Definitely. Recommended. I quickly inhaled the meal. It was so perfect I waved away the dessert menu, but was given baklava and tea anyway. 
It's a Turkish pistachio and honey confection, the period at the end of a perfect sentence, and this tiny taste wasn't enough to tip my feeling of happy fullness into heaviness. For those keeping track, I used the Samsung A14 for all shooting this time. It takes better pictures than the Pixel 7a about 60% of the time. Afterward, I took a long walk to scope out the neighborhood's other dining scene on Highland Boulevard. As usual, there were points of interest, such as the study of blue hydrant and beer can. The picture is a study of love and disrespect. No doubt the can was thrown by a passing driver and would be picked up as soon as the homeowner spotted it. Staten Island homes are almost invariably immaculate and maintained with the same kind of care that went into my lunch. These two new-looking houses were part of a larger group. I liked the look of them. The home on the left was well into the holiday spirit and probably had a son or two judging from the curbside hoop, while the one on the right was a soothing beige in the style I now call Staten Island Tasteful. Here's another home in the holiday spirit, but it's subtle. By day I could barely see the clear bulbs above the first and second floors, though the effect at night must be beautiful. Season's greetings to whoever got up on a ladder to do this. Do I detect a touch of Norwegian restraint in both the architecture and the decor? Or am I just imagining it? I ran across a reclining Kermit. Hi there. Pedestrian non sequitur two. My new walking shoes are nominally waterproof, but I decided not to test them by wading down this sidewalk. The tall turf on either side of the pooled sidewalk reminded me of the hedges and country lanes in Middle England, not to mention the canals of Amsterdam. These decorations took some balls. Yeah, I know, cheap joke. I couldn't resist. The porcine motif of this display reminded me of my previous venture into food criticism, a book called Happy Pigs Hot 100. It's out of print, and I'm debating whether I should turn the Staten Island restaurant tour into an ebook, though these videos seem like a better idea for adaptation. Either way, as a happy pig, I totally approve of this display. On a more somber note, many in memory of wreaths were outside St. Clair's school. Red, like our aching hearts. I lost a sister this year. When the people you love die, well, you know. The tour's first moment of incivility, or maybe second if you count the beer can thrown at the blue hydrant, came when a motorist cursed out another motorist outside the top tomato Italian supermarket. I know I've presented a naive and idealized portrait of Staten Island and its people throughout the tour. This is a conscious choice. I would prefer to dwell on the best in people, and cars seem to bring out the worst in them. The one thing that makes me uncomfortable about this predominantly suburban borough as you may have noted in the frequent pedestrian non sequitur comments, is its over-reliance on cars despite having very pleasant walkable streets, a very functional rail line, and extensive bus lines I have yet to explore. Still, whenever a missing sidewalk has forced me into the street, drivers have been courteous, perhaps because they've been there themselves. Today's incident notwithstanding, they behave a hell of a lot better than the privileged honking demons of my own neighborhood in Upper Manhattan. A place I also love, but for totally different reasons. If you're enjoying the Staten Island restaurant tour, you can follow the blog version at medium.com. To follow the YouTube version, click follow next to my name at the top. Then click subscribe to get emails on new episodes. See you soon.